Hello, welcome YouTubers. In this lesson, we're going to implement the saving method of our chat app so that it saves the message into our parse backend. And right now I'm looking at my parse dashboard, which we created this chat app in lesson, I think it was two or something like that. Uh, but log in to your parse account and you should see what you created back in lesson two, or maybe it was lesson three. But go down here, go to core. Okay, so here we have the data for our chat app. We have one single test class with one row. Um, and this was just a test to make sure that we had integrated the parse framework correctly. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of that. We don't really need this. So I'm just going to say drop class. Type in the name of the class to confirm. And instead, we're going to add a class. We're going to call it message. And there's our message class. There's no rows in here. We're going to add a column and we're going to make it type string. And we're just going to call it text. So in this uh, column, it's going to contain the text for that message. Now, uh, I'm going to open up the documentation in a new tab. It's really important to understand how to read documentation uh, because new things are coming out all the time and there may not be tutorials for it as soon as it comes out. It's very important to be able to look at the documentation and figure things out. So that's how we're going to approach it. And I'll show you guys where to look. So here we're looking at the iOS uh, guide documentation for parse scroll down so everything all the records are pf objects okay and in here here's a sample of saving an object which is what we would want to do uh, to save a row in our message table here and in this sample code you can switch between objective c and swift so switch to Swift and here you can see what's happening. We're creating a new PF object of class game score, although ours is going to be message and it's assigning it to this game score uh, variable right here. And then it's set, it's setting 1337, this value into the key score. So we don't have a key named score. And the key is basically the column. We have a column named text. So in here, we're going to put text. And instead of assigning 1337, we're going to assign whatever the user entered into the text field in our app. And then we're going to call this method save in background with block. And this block of code is going to get executed uh, after the saving has occurred. Now, if you had more columns that you wanted to set values for, you could you know, add a couple more lines here, as in the, this example sets the player name and the cheat mode and stuff like that. But all we're interested in for our particular case is setting this text field. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So going back into our Xcode project, uh, we have an action method send button tapped and this occurs when the user taps the send button so here let's say uh, create a pf object set the text key to the text of the message text field save the pf object okay so create a new let's create a variable and say new message object equals and we can even put the type what it is that this variable contains new pf object class name message 
right? That's what we created here in our parse backend. All right. So now we can say new message object key, which is the column that we created called text. We're going to make it equal to self dot message text field dot text. And actually this line, we're going to move it under this comment. And lastly, we save the PF object. So new message object dot save. Uh, we want to do this one, save in background with block. Okay, so press enter. And then in here, you can double click that to open up that closure. Um, and the closure is essentially just a block of code that we're going to run that you can pass in as a parameter here. Uh, so the parameters uh, for that closure is a Boolean and an NS error. If we go into the documentation, we can take a look. So see, here's the Boolean. Here's the Boolean and here's the error. They give it two labels, success and error. So you can check this success Boolean. It's going to be true or false. Uh, whether the save was successful or unsuccessful. So here you see this if statement, it's checking this success label. Uh, it's a Boolean value, right? So if success is true, then object has been saved. Else there was a problem, check error dot description, which is this guy right here. So let's give it the same label. So you can double click that as well. So let's say success, right? error like that and here we put in some code we can put in the same type of code if success is true and I, I type out equals equals true just so it's more explicit for beginners oftentimes uh, that is easier to understand than just that this is also okay because if success if this boolean is true then this if statement is true as well but I'm just going to make it more, uh, more wordy, but more clear for beginners. So if success equals equals true, then the message has been saved. Yay. Else something bad happened. Uh, and we can do something like NS log error dot description and just log that out to the console uh, to see what has happened. Okay, so right now we're going to write a to-do here. Uh, retrieve the latest messages and reload the table. So we're going to do that in the next lesson. In this lesson, I just want to make sure that when the user hits the send button that this PF object gets created, uh, the message, the text field text gets assigned to this key, and then this object actually gets saved into our parse backend, and then we should be able to see a new row here. Okay, so let's hit run, see what we get. All right, so let's send hello. Okay, so I didn't put any breakpoints there, but so I'm actually not sure if it happened or not, but we can refresh it here and we can see uh, there's a refresh button here. I should have uh, outputted a log statement just so we could see it in the console. Should have logged something upon success. Uh, but sure enough, in our parse backend, we see our new row. See, hello, that's what I typed. And it was just sent right now. Um, but what I what I probably should do is, let's ns log uh, message saved successfully. And furthermore, uh, when the send button is tapped, I probably want to disable, let's do that after 
did end editing. Disable the send button and text field. So we can say self dot message text field dot enabled is false. And the send button dot enabled is false. And what this does is it just um, it grays out the text field in the button so that as this is happening, the user can't change the text or hit send again um, and make it save multiple times or something like that. Okay. Uh, and what we want to do after the save in background with block, whether it's successful or not, we want to enable the um, text field and send button. So here we say self dot send button dot enabled equals true self dot message text field dot enabled equals true and let's run it again okay the keyboard didn't pop up this time but sometimes that just happens in the simulator but I can still type it with my uh, Bluetooth keyboard right here. If you want, you can actually, in the simulator up here, you can just go to keyboard under hardware and you can, you can either disconnect the hardware keyboard so you can uncheck this and then you will see that, but then you won't be able to use your keyboard to type any text. So sometimes, you know, just having your Bluetooth keyboard interferes with the simulator like that. Um, but I, I would rather connect my hardware keyboard and, and use that. So don't worry if your keyboard doesn't pop up. On the phone, it actually will. I'm going to hit send. You can see everything's disabled. I can't click that. I can't, I can't click the send button. And then voila. You can see here in the console that message saved successfully. And in my simulator, I can now, again, uh, tap the send button or the text field. One thing we forgot though is probably we want to clear the text field after the message is saved successfully. So in here I'm going to say self dot message text field dot text is just equal to an empty string like that. And then back in our parse backend, if we click refresh up here in the upper right hand corner, we're going to see two rows of data for the two messages that I sent right there. All right, so that does it for this lesson. In the next one, we're going to uh, retrieve the data from parse. Uh, so we're going to display these two messages instead of test one, test two, and test three. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.